Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to our webinar on what's new in microdrainage 2018. Uh, this is Peter Coombs at Innovice, and I'm both delighted and excited to be sat alongside my uh, colleague, uh, Max Anderson. Uh, Max is the product manager for microdrainage, and I'm excited because this is um, a step change in the upgrade process with microdrainage, um, of which Max will be showing you a lot of detail uh, during the course of this one hour webinar. For those that are new to the webinar series, um, you'll notice there's a little pop up screen. You're all muted because we have um, hundreds of people logged into the webinar, but there is an opportunity to post questions to us. So what we'll do between the two of us is answer the questions as we go along, uh, maybe relay some for uh, public consumption, and at the end we'll produce a frequency app, frequently asked question uh, sheet that we'll distribute to everybody, along with a link to a recording of this webinar so you can uh, replay the webinar at your end. So the agenda today, uh, so it's going to take about an, an hour, uh, we'll start off by looking at the latest industry drivers. And these are fundamentally based upon the BIM requirements that are coming through and the latest updates on SUDS modeling. Uh, we'll cover the overview on what's new features, the themes and the, and the benefits that are coming through to you. And just to say, um, don't panic, we haven't issued this yet. Uh, it will be released as of next Monday onwards. So by the time of my birthday, which is the 19th of May, uh, you should all have reached uh, the point where you've installed the software. Uh, if there are any queries, do contact your head record holders. And if you're not sure who that is, then drop us a line and we can refer them uh, to you uh, for, your, for your upgrades. But this will be happening over the next, sort of, say, three weeks uh, period. Uh, the main part of the demonstrate, the main part of the presentation today will be a demonstration of those key features that Max will be running for us, showing those um, enhanced uh, integrated features, uh, the import and export capabilities of the software to make life quicker and easier for people, um, having heard that there's quite a lot of pain uh, when you're working on the uh, on the larger projects of uh, exchanging data. And there are also improvements to the flow of the water through the structures modeling, which is in the MD sets uh, module as well. So we'll share that with you. So building information modeling um, level two, which is the kind of current level that we're being asked to comply with, is it's a collaborative process. So we're trying to exchange a lot of information, a, a lot of data, which is intelligent data. And if we work collaboratively, this will then add, add value not, not just during your design, but throughout the whole life cycle of that drainage system, if you're working with micro drainage, for example. So what we're doing is we're, we're creating models at the end of the day, which then have to be exchanged and passed on to other uh, a, a whole component. Ultimately, with the micro drainage models, they'll, they'll typically end up in the laps of lead local flood authorities and water utility companies. And with the water utility companies, typically, they're creating um, a large model of their drainage systems. And that model will be created in InfoWorks. And then from the micro drainage uh, update on the new development, that will then end up in an InfoWorks model, for example. It's not just 3D data um, that some people maybe consider BIM to be just of all weather 3D. It's a lot of intelligent data, a lot of structured data, and I keep emphasizing the word data because what we are in, in advice now as one company, we are experts at handling uh, and exchanging data and uh, analyzing data, manipulating data, etc. So the, the whole idea is to, aim, is to improve the productivity and reduce the amount of waste. There's, there's a lot of time wasted in trying to exchange information from one third-party software package to another. And hopefully, uh, we'll illustrate during the course of this presentation that we have gone a long way. It's still a journey, but we've taken an enormous first leap, I would say, in satisfying the requirements with microdrainage. So how, how does microdrainage fit into that, that process at the minute? Well, the drainage design at the start of the process is a, it's a fundamental part and the starting part of that process. So the outputs from microdrainage then need to go elsewhere. Um, this is a, a requirement for, for the government um, projects, so if you're working on Highways England schemes, if you're working on government buildings, schools, etc., you'll be very familiar with this requirement. And the design and construction process 
does mean that changes often have to be made. So it would be very nice if we could just design something in microdrainage and that was the end of the story. Unfortunately, that is not the case. Um, we find that we have to do a lot of edits during the course of the design process to satisfy clients, to satisfy improving authorities and, and the rest of the design team. Um, but then you also have to exchange that information. And when you get on site, you'll find that there'll be some, some further changes that take place. And this is where the pressure really comes. Um, on the large motorway schemes, imagine having tens of kilometers of surface water drainage system that have to be then amended. The exchange of information between micro drainage into a third party software package and backwards and forwards, there's a, there's a risk and a fear of losing data. Is everything being carried across accurately? Uh, is it all happening correctly, et cetera? Is, is a major, major hurdle and a, a major pain, I, I realize. So that data exchange is, is core to everything that we've been doing with the 2018 release. Yeah, I think I think that's a that's a really good point, uh, Peter, and, and, and certainly from from my view, speaking to engineers as well, it's often um, we need to get an understanding of which software packages that engineers need to uh, need need to talk to um, as well. So we've got another poll here that we're we're going to launch, uh, which is uh, all about where do you have to replicate your data during your drainage design processes. Um, so are they are we going to standard products like? Uh, Autodesk products, Bentley products, for example, uh, where we might have to, to interact with software such as uh, Cinema 3D, uh, or alternatively, um, even just moving into modeling packages as well. So Peter mentioned, um, for example, the water utility companies, if you work there, are you finding you're having to, uh, to come across there? So we've got that poll open now. Uh, that's nice to see that sort of 50% of you have voted already. We'll keep that up again for, for a little bit longer. Um, again, let's see where, where you think that this is happening to, uh, to go. Um, very interesting to, to, to see this one. So we'll close this poll down in, in sort of five seconds now. So last chances to, uh, to vote. Yeah, five, four, three, two, one. Thank you very much, everybody. And there we go. You can see where we're having to, to replicate our, our drainage data. Really interesting. Thanks, Max. Thank you, folks, um, for, for your participation. I hope you find this interesting. Um, 70%. We, we, we typically hear that around about 75% of the, the micro drainage customer base are using Civil 3D. Um, so that, that matches up very nicely in, in, indeed. Um, probably about 25%, maybe a little bit less, using kind of Bentley products like um, MX Open Roads and, and things like that nowadays. And you can see that, and interestingly, that InfoWorks is the sort of second highest scorer on, on the poll. So um, that's really good to really good to know. Uh, more, more of that later. Um, I will now carry on with the presentation just to finish up to show that obviously various software packages need to be able to exchange this information between one, one and another. Um, and that's been the key theme of the 2018 development, along with the sets of improvements as well. So just to, to move on, the, the workflow right now appears to be from feedback from a range of visits that we've made around the country with, with people, with Civil 3D in particular, is that what folks will do is create a drainage layout within either full AutoCAD or with Civil 3D. And to do that, you need to draw it. CAD uh, module, which the vast majority of people, I realize, um, have. And then that information is exported out, the network's exported out and brought into microdrainage in either an SWS or uh, an MDX type format. And within microdrainage, we then design the pipe network. Uh, we can create a model, add in structures, add in flow controls, and then we export back into Civil 3D or Full Auto AutoCAD. So the, the thing here is if you're just using the SWS format, it really does only bring in the flow conveyance system, pipes, manholes, maybe swales, et cetera, but not the flow controls and not the structures, which is not a fully integrated model. So we're really highly dependent upon the Autodesk updates with the SWS import-export functionality. And there's always a shadow effect when Autodesk released their 2019 version, there's probably going to be a six month delay uh, before that import export function um, happens. So that's not satisfactory. So what we've done, uh, we've taken away that 
that risk and that responsibility. And we've set something up that Max will share with you very shortly to uh, keep us up to date as we go. So this is the kind of current issues that we've been hearing from people is it seemed to be a little bit of a one-way loop. Um, we want to either have the information designed and exported across in designed in microdrange and exported across into say civil 3d and vice versa so if we were to say that at the click of a button you can either accept the micro drainage version or the civil 3d version um, that's something that we, we, we would like to offer for your uh, testing and uh, approval and feedback you need to track and have confidence in the edits and the constant changes that are taking place so if there's a seamless integration within say civil 3d and um, those those changes are instantaneous that will take away an awful lot of time and pain and we can import and export structures and flow controls as well that's another major task that we've put to the development team that we i believe succeeded in very very successfully right now So in terms of, yeah, Max, you want to take a look on the IC? Yeah, so we know that um, for some of you sat there thinking, well, Civil 3D, that's all well and good, but that's not where I'm uh, sort of coming from. So for some of those of you who may be using products such as, as Revit or, or outside of the, the, the Autodesk um, suite, so, so with things like Bentley, um, we know that we need to, to, to make ourselves better integrated as well. And, and there's been a file format knocking around in regards to BIM for quite some time now. It originated really as a, Structures, uh, structural engineering file format, and that's the IFC, the Industry Foundation Classes. So, for some of those of you that, that may have come across this, um, it's managed by the Building Smart um, Consortium, really. You're, you're independent, it's, it's not owned by any single software um, vendor, this file format, so it's open. Um, the idea being that we can help build interoperability um, between our different software packages through using this, and this is something which um, for our 2018.1 release of micro drainage, we're pleased to announce we've included an IFC export in there. So for programs, a lot, a lot of BIM programs that will read IFC, you'll now see that you've got a new way to, to move your drainage uh, data out from micro drainage and into those packages. So th thanks for the question, Lars. So Lars posed the question, when, when does it become integrated with Revit? Yeah, so so hopefully, Niall, you'll, you'll start to see, we'll, we'll show later in the in the software, I'll be opening up one of our IFC exports um, into Revit to, to, to show you that sort of as we go live. Excellent. Thank you, Max. And just to let you know, there, there are questions about whether we're taking a recording of this, and we actually are. So uh, you will be able to sort of review and replay this at your leisure um, after the event. We'll send out a hyperlink so that you can re replay this as well. Um, so in terms of routes for data exchange from micro drainage, for example, um, what we are looking at doing there with third-party software packages is providing this IFC export import functionality. So at this minute in time, we're pushing out from micro drainage towards those packages such as Revit, but we're not importing the IFC back from Revit into micro drainage as this first step, just to be clear. Um, I'm, I'm clicking on my screen rather than trying to move the slides forward. So uh, if we just ping at the next. Uh, when we're looking at linking with AutoCAD Civil 3D, which is you know the majority of people, about 70% of the audience group working with Civil 3D probably, um, we're, we're doing that import-export seamless integration right now. Uh, and that historical link now is with SWS is not an issue any longer. So we've negated the requirement to use the SWS format in effect. So that would make life quicker and easier. I think that's enough of my introduction, Max. I think the, the exciting bit is showing the latest software. So I'll hand over to Max and uh, I'll field your questions as you come in. Thanks for the questions, folks. See you later. Fantastic. Thank you, Pete. So what I'm going to do now is we're, we're going to focus on the Civil 3D integration as our first step. So I'm really excited to start to show you. Um, this is our, our, our MicroTrainage 2018.1 uh, release. Uh, for some of the, some of you who may not be aware with some of our current CAD capabilities um, with microdrainage, uh, I'll just give you a, a brief overview of what, what you can see here um, on my screen at the minute. Um, so hopefully you'll see something um, AutoCAD or AutoCAD Civil 3D users, it looks a little bit familiar. Um, and what you'll notice is I've got what's known as a, a ribbon on the top here um, containing a lot of microdrainage tools. And that's one of the things that uh, we have available. So anybody that's working with the DrawNet module, 
Um, so if you see our, our module selector here, if you've got Drawnet on your license, you have this ability to plug directly into uh, the CAD environment and you can do a lot of the, the network definition um, that's required in, in, in market drainage automatically um, in here. Um, so, so that's what the Drawnet CAD ribbon uh, does. What I'm going to show you now is our brand new integration uh, in terms of how we interact with the uh, civil 3, uh, 3D environment in which we sit. So just going to close my module selector down and we're just going to take a quick look at this site that we've got um, that's been developed here. And if you take a closer look, if we zoom in, we see that we've got what looks potentially or suspiciously like a carriageway um, running down the middle of my site. And I can see that somewhere in here, uh, in this blue line with the, uh, the Ds, this is actually um, what a drainage network looks like within the Civil 3D environment, for those of you that, that may not have seen it. If I have a quick look on my uh, prospector tab uh, and we take a look at the uh, pipe networks in here, we can see that we've got a, a Civil 3D drainage network um, tucked in here with our, our pipes and structures. Now, one of the things that we can uh, do automatically is we want to replicate this. So perhaps someone's been designing the roads and has quite sort of kindly um, sketched a polyline and said, okay, this is going to be my drainage run uh, within Civil 3D. So one common workflow is that we might already have an understanding of the layout, just the layout um, of the drainage network within the Civil 3D environment. But we need to make sure that we've got that within micro drainage, um, or alternatively, for some of you, you'd be starting in, in, in micro drainage as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we can very, very quickly import this information about a drainage run um, into micro drainage. I'll just show you the profile view that we've got going on here. And this is because Civil 3D's pipe sizing and pipe location is a little bit, uh, a little bit basic. It is trying to just do, do um, the layout. It's not focusing on sizing. So you can see some of the joins here are, are pretty horrendous. Um, we will come back and have a look at this um, in market drainage as we start to optimize the design. So we've got something called the network manager within micro drainage. Uh, and in here, this is where you'll see our, our one touch functionality that we've, uh, we've got here. We've got two new buttons appearing here for exporting and importing um, from the Civil 3D or apps to Civil 3D from micro drainage. Just a point to note, export means we're moving from micro drainage to Civil 3D, importing we're moving from Civil 3D to micro drainage. Um, one thing that I am just going to check before I do this um, is I'm using some pipe network catalogs that we install uh, with the Drawnet CAD ribbon. Um, so at the minute we're using our, our own uh, micro drainage catalogs for, for parts to, to help achieve this uh, integration. Um, our next state is to, is to work directly with your pipe catalogs um, as well. So, so just to show you uh, this, this basic import then, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to import this network from Civil 3D. And what you'll see is that we've got a new network appeared within my network manager. This network called Network 1. If I look here, that is Pipe Network 1 um, that we've uh, we've grabbed the information for. So I'm just going to, to remove my Storm 1. Um, that was just there to, to save me having to open up the, uh, the software in front of you. There's, uh, there's nothing strange going on there, so we'll delete that. And we'll start to investigate this import a little bit further. So the first thing that we notice is that the microdrainage has wanted to bring this in as an existing network, just in case I have gone to the, the, the level of, of, of specking out where I want um, the, the levels in this network to sit. So if we have gone to that level of detail already, we don't want to lose that information directly. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open up my network details form. And hopefully what you'll see here is we've got all of that drainage design information that we're used to seeing within microdrainage. So uh, for those of you who don't have drawn it, you'll, you'll be very familiar with entering your data uh, in here. But one of the things that I'm going to do now is I'm going to convert this to a storm network. Um, and by a storm network, what I mean is that I'm going to set some design rules for micro drainage to follow and then re-optimize the design of my network. So if we say yes to this, um, we enter in our, our standard design criteria. So typically here, we're designing our pipes for, for no surcharge. So again, I can select where in the country I'm working, just to sort of give you a clue. We're in uh, Wallingford today, nearest big city to, to Wallingford is, is Oxford, so we'll stick to Oxford, um, and we'll enter a global time of entry. Likewise, what we can also start to do is pick sizing rules in here. So for those of you familiar with uh, micro drainage, how we set pipe, uh, pipe sizing rules in the design criteria, 
that's exactly the same in, in here within our, our Clawnet count functionality. So we've done that now. We've uh, converted this to a storm network. And because it's a storm network, I'm going to start adding in information about the areas that this network might drain. So I'm going to start to specify my impermeable areas. Likewise, I could sketch these out uh, within the CAD environment if I wanted to. Um, or alternatively, what I'm just going to do here is add in some, some extra detailing sort of by hand. So I'm just going to put in a couple of areas. And what you'll see straight away is that my drainage is optimizing. So it's picking the pipe diameters that it needs to use based on that design criteria to size it. So we saw to begin with, everything was 100 million diameter. Well, now we've, we've got a combination here of uh, 150 millimeter and 225 millimeter pipes. Again, if we want to uh, check our invert levels as well, um, we can do that. We can optimize on there. So again, now if I have a look at the long section, what you'll see is that I should have optimized um, to cover for me. So again, just extending it out. We can see how it's following the profile of the ground as best as it can until here we get the ground starting to rise and, and go away as well. So at this point, I, I've implemented a change in my micro-drainage model. Um, I could take the micro-drainage model further forward, start doing my simulations, checking that my network is, has been suitably sized um, and well designed. But most likely, as we, we mentioned in some of the workflows, uh, for some of you, we would now have to go back to Civil 3D and replicate that change in, in our Civil 3D network. And that can be an awful long time sort of implementing those changes. It can take us sort of a, a good half day, if we're lucky, implementing some of these these changes within a model such as Civil 3D. What I'm going to show you now, though, is how we can update and reflect these changes automatically in, in a single click of the button. So here I've got my network one, and all I'm going to do now is I'm going to export to my Civil 3D network. So if I export now, I'm going to get a warning, and that's because I've used a surface in, in Civil 3D, a road surface as my design surface. So I'm just going to say, yes, I want to keep all of those road points within my uh, within my surface. Um, so, and what you'll see here, if we go and have a look at the network now and start to investigate um, the pipes themselves, is we've actually changed and we've reflected those uh, um, those pipe size changes. Another good way to see it is we have this profile set up earlier on. Look, we've got our lovely socket socket joins now um, across all of our pipe network, having been implemented at the optimum depth of cover. So we can see the minor drainage change has been implemented into Civil 3D with a single click of a button. Um, so, so this is really sort of the powerful stuff now. Very, very quick, single button, confirm change from one model, replicate it in the next. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to introduce a new pipe, uh, pipe branch line, and I'm going to do this to begin with directly within microdrainage. So I'm going to do it within microdrainage and then show you how that change is, is reflected. So, very straightforward to uh, do. I'm going to use my define pipe tool. I'm going to select some pipes. It's asking me to confirm a cover level. So I'm just going to start to specify another branch line down here. I'm just picking these values at random. So, so don't worry too much um, about this. Um, some of you will, will be using surfaces directly within, within here and Cav will be picking up these, these cover levels for you. But what you can see, having connected into my uh, existing system, is that Microtraining just picked this up as a new run. So it's a new branch within the network. And again, if we take a look at the network detailing um, on here, so sorry, just escape out of that command. What we can see is we can see that we've got our new branch line sat in the middle of the network as we're expecting within microdrainage. So that's, that is integrated as part of my network design. One of the things I'm going to do at the minute just to, is use a common uh, manhole naming convention. So I'm just going to go to something like that and renumber my manholes so that we can see those. And then again, to reflect this change, what I might want to do is I might want to add some area in here. Let's say we've got another. 0.1 of a hectare coming in at the, the top, top of the pipe and optimize this as well. So having optimized this, I'm happy with my invert levels, um, SATS cover levels. And again, all I need to do to reflect that change, and this is where the micro is becoming really powerful now, 
is just to export that back to Civil 3D. I'm going to get the warning about my uh, my cover levels. I'm going to accept that. And there you go. You can see automatically it's created me the extra drainage run. It's tied that directly into my network. So there's no extra network being created. Just got that single plant network. But you'll see in here if we, we start to have a look. We can we can see that these uh, pipe names are, are coming through within micro drainage um, directly in here. So that's adding and and removing um, that's adding an element to a model. But what happens if we need to remove it? So maybe we think manhole ten over here is a, a little bit unnecessary. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just delete this um, from a micro drainage model. So this is just to show you the fact that we might send this back. To micro drainage, we might start to implement a change, and now we've got a mismatch between our two models. So we've got a mismatch between the drawnet model and the civil 3D model. So again, I just want to decide which way around am I going to reflect the change. In this case, we'll assume that the uh, the drawnet model has been updated accurately. So again, we can push out to CAD. What you'll see now is we get an additional warning just telling us about two structures. So we've got an extra pipe and an extra structure, which are present in the Civil 3D network, and they're not present within the micro drainage model. So do we want to get rid of this? And we'll say, yes, we do. We want to update our change. And again, we get that, that surface warning, just because I'm, I'm using a Civil 3D surface here as well. So that's quite simply and quickly how we can implement changes in here. So as soon as there's a difference, micro drainage is intelligently Clocking on to what these objects are, um, so, so we, we handle the identification of the parts within the Civil 3D network and the parts within our micro drainage model. So any change made to one can be simply and quickly reflected in the other. But it would be lovely if we just designed networks um, like this. Um, but we know that in, in, in real world, um, we've got far more things going on within a drainage network than just pipes and manholes. And in fact, we really want to get away from designing with pipes and manholes. We want to adopt sustainable design practices that start to use things such as swud, uh, suds, um, swuds, uh, suds, swales, um, entities like that. Perhaps as well, we need to provide attenuation storage volumes as well on site. Um, so how does micro drainage deal with this and how do we replicate something like that within the civil 3d network so what i'm going to do at the minute is i'm just going to overwrite my uh my current uh micro drainage model with uh, a good old-fashioned blue peter one that i prepared earlier so I'll overwrite this I'm going to go to my sunday best folder and we're going to have a look where i've added in a third branch here I can see that I've got a little bit of mismatch going on between my Civil 3D and my uh, network. But one of the things that I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, select this uh, pipe within my drawnet model, and I'm going to make a change. I'm going to say that this isn't a pipe anymore. This is going to be a wall in three-sided swale. So I've actually got a swale running down the back of these plots. So again, I can do this through uh, my drawnet properties, or alternatively, I can come in here and edit the model uh, live uh, on the table. So I'm going to change that from one in three sided swell. Note as well how, how we start picking up the Manning's end coefficient rather than our pipe roughness coefficient as well. Micro drainage is recognizing these changes as we go through. So I've implemented a change there. And again, I'm going to replicate that into the Civil 3D network. But some of you might be thinking, well, what on earth is going on with a, uh, a swell? What is, what is Civil 3D going to going to do with that? How's it going to cope? Well, again, as we export, we get some information about things that are going to be updated. So we'll say yes to those. And avoid the surface. And what you'll see that we've got is a corridor. So for those of you who might be familiar with doing roads design uh, in, in uh, Civil 3D, you'll be used to the idea of taking a, a cross-sectional profile um, and projecting that along what we call an alignment. Um, but previously, uh, within uh, Civil 3D, these alignments, they weren't linked through to our drainage network, whereas here in micro drainage, they're actually linked. So um, if we take a quick look at this uh, within uh, a 3D view, so I'm just going to orbit around my model in 3 And what you can actually see now is we've got the model in 3D, and we've actually got these objects located at the correct height and they're being, they're being um, 
so if they start to uh, up to our, our cover levels as well correctly in here. So again, if we want to reflect or, or, or make any sort of change in here, um, I'm just going to escape out and go back to our uh, top top down view, our plan view. We go and have a look at this. We can quite simply sort of make a change. So so one of the things we might do is we might go through some hydraulic analysis, decide that our swales need to actually be a bit larger, or perhaps we've got concerns about the steepness of the size of these swales. So we're going to shallow them out a little bit. We're going to use them at one in four side slopes. Again, I'm going to optimize around this change as well. So I'm implementing an optimized design. And finally, I'm going to push this back to Civil 3D. And what you notice is that the land take on this actually gets a bit larger. So there you go, because we're extending up now a, a shallower slope, the land take of this object has got larger. We've got, we've got a bit wider. So what we can start to do in here is we're starting to design real world, true to site, how is this thing going to actually sit in the ground? Um, so this is what we're doing with uh, swale features um, when we're using those. Uh, but another classic one, and a classic one that often requires a lot of rework within microdrainage, is the use of pond elements. Um, so again, I'm just going to run through a very si similar process uh, using another model that's got a, a pond. So Again, I'll just quickly over, override this and show you what we can do in terms of a pond. So I've now got a draw net CAD model, uh, which contains a pond element. Again, if I push this out to CAD, I'm going to get told about my updates. Um, yep, fine, we'll, we'll allow these to be updated. And what you'll see here is that we get a surface now created as a pond. So if we take a quick look in here, we have a surface. And that's the way that traditionally, a lot of people who've been using Civil 3D have been trying to replicate something like an open storage structure, such as a pond or an infiltration basin. But one of the things that you'll notice straight away, um, and one of the things that when I, when I showed Pete, he, he quite rightly pointed out to me, which is neither of us has ever seen a perfectly circular pond implemented on the site. Um, and that's absolutely true. If you have got any cir perfectly circular ponds, send us a nice picture um, to, to Innovise. Normally, what we have to do is we actually have to shape this based around the ground that we've, uh, we've got and the space that we've got available to us within the site. So um, one of the things that I'm just going to show you is a quick comparison of this model. So um, within normal microdrainage, so, so this is normal microdrainage where I was designing the pond. And what you'll see, to so those of you that, uh, that might be familiar with pond design, is that I, I've got a very simple set of depth versus area um, calculations um, for my pond. And this actually dis defines the storage volume available within the pond. So you can see down there at the bottom of my uh, screen, we've got 1,850 odd uh, meters cubed of storage being provided in here. But actually, what happens if we need to start to change this um, design to actually fit the bounds and, and the shape of my site? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you sort of a, a typical process of editing um, the surface within Civil 3D and how microdrainage can actually adapt and react to these changes. So I'm just going to start to, to play about with uh, some of the uh, some of the values in here. Uh, I'm just going to check as well with my uh, elevations uh, that we're getting the right sort of shapes. So again, if I just escape that command. And have a quick look at our elevations. Still got everything at, the, at my top level correctly. We've just added a couple more points into the surface and, and are starting to uh, to change the, the shape of this. Oh, no. My elevation editor seems to be you know, sticking out there. It's a good old panorama. There we go. Um, and grab that. Likewise, what I'm going to do is I'm also going to change the bottom surface as well. So in changing the bottom surface and moving it perhaps to a, a different height, what you're going to see is, is, is retriangulation of this pond um, within Civil 3D and also how that change can be reflected into microdrainage. So again, I'm going to change the, the shape of this just a little bit in here so that I can have a play about with my the shape of my pond. So um, hopefully you'll all agree I've now um, been able to implement enough changes to mean that this, this pond now is fundamentally different to the pond that we started with. Um, again, what I'm going to do here is just change the shape a little bit. So we're starting to see a more real-world um, 
approach to 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 our pond design. Again, I it's probably worth asking a question. Uh, thanks for your question. I've gone really quiet here, folks. I'm trying to answer all the questions that are coming in. Um, but there's one that's kind of pertinent to where Max is in the demonstration right now. Um, is it possible to get the correct layers once it's exported into Civil 3D, um, as they only get pipe and structure layer, but how to get all the layers for different assets like filter drains, slot drains, channels, etc.? Yeah, you'll see some of these coming through in in the uh, in, in in the software. What what, I, what I'd recommend is get you, get get your hands uh, on it and, and start playing and, and, and really investigate it um, in here. But but that that's a good point. So this is groundbreaking, and the the idea that this surface is now part of our our, our drainage network is something that we've had to develop as intelligence from micro drainage ourselves um, directly in here. Um, but what I'll do then is I'm just going to um, rebuild my surface. So you can see that the, the surface has now been uh, rebuilt. Uh, likewise, as well, we, we create a, a, a general overall uh, surface based on our elevations. You, you can change that surface out if you, if you need to hit a, a different surface as well. I, I think I saw a question. Yeah, that as well. we've got another one. Thanks, David. Um, do, do you have to alter the entire pond, or can it auto change to be consistent? Um, so, um, so we we basically highlighted the different changes of section at, at, at different depths of the pond. Yeah. So you have to you have to affect the the layer. Yeah, or the levels. We can we can start to play with this surface as as, as much as we. We like really because micro drainage is remembering that this surface is, is very much tied into um, our, our drainage network. So if I if I just um, show you now in a, a 3D orbit, just to show you the fact that yeah, we, we've done some some surface changing in here. We we can see yeah, our contouring is now significantly different, and I've only been extending, so we should see a larger set of depth area relationships as well. Yeah. And what I'm going to do now. Translation should it really well. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So um, now we could import. So this is a change from uh, micro drainage coming back in here. So I'm going to import this back in. And again, if I if I were to now sort of save this in micro drainage, um, let's call this webinar two, um, and open this up. Then what you'll be able to see is in, is this change reflected. So I actually did this earlier with a, a, another pond too, but I do want to, if I can, show you this absolutely sort of live. So so no trickery or anything like that. This is what you're you're seeing. And then again, if we go to our uh, pond or tank storage structure, we can actually see in here that the way that I was interfacing with my my surfacing, I've changed that depth area table um, quite quite significantly. Um, in here. So this is really, really useful because it's these depth areas that are defining the volume available within my pond. So you can see that the volume has increased now uh, quite significantly. Um, so this is good. This is giving me the true to life volume that I need to take into consideration when I'm doing my hydraulic analysis. So we no more sort of wondering, oh, is it about right? Does this circle look about right for the size of my pond? You can actually design the pond as you want it to be within the Civil 3D. Um, environment, um, and that change will be then be reflected back into micro drainage for, for analysis and, and the purposes and points of view of that. So that's really a, a bit of a whistle stop tour, an introduction to our, our Civil 3D um, requirement. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move back to uh, another model and show you um, another exciting piece of uh, functionality that we've added into the software, which is our IFC export. So I'm just going to open up Another one, so again, based on, on, on the same model that we've uh, we've got going on here. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add in some flow controls into um, our software as well. So I'm going to go, for example, and, and, and drop a hydro break control into a manhole down here. Um, we can just pick some, some values. So again, this is another advantage of micro drainage working with all of the industry standard um, sort of parts and, and manufacturers that, that we have within the drainage design uh, world. So here's a, a typical one from Hydro International. Uh, micro drainage is running through uh, this. It's picking the uh, hydro brake. So we'll say okay to this. And we've now added a flow control in there. 
one of the other things that I might choose to do as well is perhaps when my swell gets full, I've got, I've got some means of sending water across to the pond via perhaps a, a, an offline weir. So I'm going to add in an offline control as well. So again, it's picking a crest level for me. Yeah, I'm happy enough. Maybe we'll move it a little bit higher up. So there's a 36.8 or 37, nice round numbers. Um, I'm going for two meter width, but I'm going to loop this across to, to where my pond is. So just taking a quick look at that, it's going to be the upstream end of pipe 2.002. So say, okay, there you go. There's an offline loop in there. Now, at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to utilize our IFC export functionality. So for that, that is available. It's, it's available from normal market drainage, no need for, for Drawnet or, or Drawnet CAD. Um, and what you'll see is we've got an IFC export option available to us here. Um, asks us for some, some typical information that we might want to use. But one thing to note is, is the fact that we work, we work currently with two different IFC uh, schemas um, at two different stages and, and the reason for that is that we know that out there within the industry there is a, uh, a compliance and, and compatibility to different versions of these schemas across different software packages so we thought we'd take the bells and braces approach and, and give you both um, so whichever software package you're intending to, to be able to open this up uh, into you, you'll be able to see that uh, for yourselves so i'm just going to um, select the file name uh, to, to save it I'm going to go through, I can see I've got this network available to me, so I'm ready to, to utilize this network. And here I can select which objects I'm going to include within this export. So I want the pipes and the manholes for the standard conveyance system, but also want to see my storage structures and my flow controls uh, as well. So we'll click finish, and my drainage is just generating me the IFC export there, it's, it's done that automatically. And now I've got an IFC file to, to use sort of in, in real time. Now, there are a whole different host of software packages that will, will utilize the IFC format. I'm going to show you two. Um, so Revit, we've already had mentioned as being one that will uh, utilize, uh, utilize the IFC uh, format and is quite a common destination. I've also got just a free viewer here, a BIM Vision. Um, it's a piece of freeware that just allows you to, to view the contents of an IFC file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up. Here's our um, IFC export that we just saved this morning. I'm just going to double click on that one. And there you go. So, so this is sort of the format within our IFC file. Again, what you'll start to see is that we've got our 3D representation in here. But again, if we start to go in and in investigate information about, about these uh, objects, um, what we'll see is that we highlight what it is um, and we've also got some, some properties related to it. So we've got things like the manhole properties already assigned in here, easting, northing, um, what uh, our cover level is at that exact location. Have we got anything else interesting going on? So let's have a look at this map. Our hydro brake, so you can see in the properties directly in here, we've got an online control specified as being a hydro brake. Likewise, if we break this down a little bit further, we can actually see the information relating to that hydro brake itself. Um, directly in here, likewise with pipes and, and, and manholes. Also our storage structures, note on the IFC export, we're sticking to, to the way that microdrainage drainage typically interprets a storage structure, which is depth and area relationships. So it's it's a bit circular, like it's circular in its, in its outputs um, here um, at this moment in time. There's one other thing that we can do and that was actually made available in the last release of, of microdrainage. Um, but I know that a lot of people may not be aware of this functionality being available um, already, which is network classification status. So we did have a module called uh, COST, uh, which allowed you to, to, to apply, for example, thicknesses to, to pipes, start to look at the embedding depth information about putting our pipes in the ground. Um, what happened uh, is that we freed up quite a bit of this through to, to other modules as well. And, um, as well. So users of System 1 saw some of this functionality starting to come their way as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly apply some of this classifications data um, to my model. So I'm going to load in here again. I'm working with my Sunday best um, folder in here, some classifications. So I've got information about in here, for example, if we start to look at pipes, about the different classifications, so clay pipes, what's the cost of that going to look like within the market drainage model? So I've applied some classifications to my network automatically. So I've now got some extra information sat in there 
And again, if we were to, to go around the IFC loop, so I'm just going to export out. So we'll say it's exactly the same thing that we had last time. We'll go through this again, a couple of days. That's an update of that. And again, I'm just going to reload in the same file. But what you'll start to see now, if I select the pipe, for example, is we have a new set of information contained in here as well, called the pipe classification properties as well. So this is information like the pipe thickness, the surround materials that we've been using, bedding depths, trench widths, things like that, that are often vital for the construction of this part in real life being recorded as well as the hydraulic pump properties as well that we need. So we're passing more intelligent sort of data, more, a, a more data rich model of information out from micro drainage. Likewise, within, in, in Revit, I'm just going to open up the, uh, the same uh, file in there. So we'll go open an IFC file. Again, where's my symbol guest folder? Here's our IFC export, and it's just going to open up. Again, I just want to see this in, in my 3D site-wide view, and there we go. We can, we can see um, entities directly within here. Likewise, if I, if I go to the same pipe, what you'll actually notice is we, we, we record these in IFC parameters, um, so in here. So we've got all of this information available to us through here, coming through as well. So we can start to see this information. Um, being, being allowed directly uh, uh, within, within the Revit environment now uh, as well. So the IFC export there showing you just what you can do in terms of getting information out in a completely new way um, from micro drainage. So a couple of other features as well, I appreciate um, we're, we're, we're move, time is moving on, um, but for those of you working in highway schemes, and we know that highway schemes often one of the big challenges uh, with microdrainage is the fact that you design all of this lovely information, you have manhole schedules from microdrainage, but actually we need to record different elements depending on what job they're doing uh, within our highway scheme. So if we're looking at uh, HD um, 4383, the, the highways documentation, um, we often have to end up in, in something, the highways agency drainage data management uh, scheme uh, and system in there. We also have a set of CSV exports that now provide that information in a more friendly format for you as well. So just having a, a quick look at this, um, we'll do a quick export. Um, this one won't be uh, particularly um, thrilling. I can't, I can't say um, it, it, it's very exciting if you're, if you're having to replicate this information, um, because what you'll see now is uh, if we go and have a look at this, um, we break it up into the individual tabs that you're often required to submit your information to. So, for example, information regarding any of our swales, information on the manholes, the pipe works. It's all being broken up and provided in the scheduling and, and formats that you, you need. So, microdrainage is recording all of this data and talking to some of the, uh, uh, some of the microdrainage users involved with things like the smart motorways programming. This is hopefully going to be a real time saver to, to some of you guys having to produce outputs for, for highways um, England and the highways agency um, in there. So that's our, our, our Haddon's export. Um, Peter also mentioned, so as well as BIM and how we export and our compatibility and interoperability of our micro drainage data, we're also um, dealing with our uh, um, representation of SUDs. So for those of you um, that might not be aware, we have a specific module targeted at the best representation of, of SUDs, particularly at the planning stage, um, that is possible. And we use some quite advanced uh, mathematics to, to be able to uh, represent the flows through these structures um, as best as we can as well. So what I'm, I'm just going to do here, is I'm going to open you up and show you the new flow control type that we've added in uh, to the MD SUDs module called the underdrain. So as many people designing SUDs out there may well be aware, um, we, we will often use a check down to try and help uh, utilize the upstream end of the, the swale to, to keep storage. So we'll have perhaps check downs in, in, in the swale element, but if we're looking at something like a, a dry swale where we have a, a trench and under drain running underneath, um, what we want to do is allow any water that's already entered the trench to keep on moving through without any any, uh, any any restriction uh, necessarily to, to the flow in, in there. So I'm just going to open up 
uh, what am I? I'll yeah. just, just make a, a comment, Max, because there are quite a few questions about modeling um, after sort of showing the model, etc. Yeah. So there are quite a few questions about uh, um, how does a pond know where the outlet and inlets are as the pipes are passing straight through it? So this, this is from Aaron. Yeah. So just, just to sort of focus in on, on what Max is about to show us with MD sets. Um, and, and also there was a Another question asking about uh, do I have to put the pond on a manhole and things like yeah. that and showing the head walls for the pond. All this kind of improved modeling side of things is it, it, starting to come through via the MD sets that Max is about to demonstrate for you. So, but it only does come with MD sets because if you're using source control, if you design a pond in source control, it does need a node in the simulation model. So you have to use a manhole as a node. When you're using MD sets, we're using flow through structure technology, and we can replace a link, for example, we can replace a pipe with a pond. So it's, it more accurately represents the reality. Absolutely. Peter's, Peter, Peter's completely right there in, in, in terms of how, how we're modeling things. So um, traditional microtrain still utilizes its, its, its no um, locations. Um, where we're not using flow through structures. So that's another important sort of point to note is that where we don't want pipes running to the middle of, uh, uh, of objects, particularly when we've got something uh, such as a linear feature here as a cycle, we can actually use a, an element in micro drainage called flow through structures that we in, implemented sort of around two years ago, uh, which allow for, for better representation of that as well. And those flow through structures will go around the um, civil 3D loop, um, just like we, we've shown you with, with our node structures uh, today. In fact, those swale sections that I mentioned earlier on with the corridors, they were they were on on link essentially. So that was replacing a pipe with an entire swale. Very much the, the same thing applies for, for flow through structures. Um, so what I've got here is I've got two sections of the swale. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce an area to the first one. I'm going to show you how the area gets into the, the swale and then drains into its trench. And then finally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you that that water will pass through to my second swale. But importantly, we start filling the trench first rather than filling up um, from the swale element. So users of MD sets may have been aware. Um, and one of the things that was mentioned was that we, we often model each one in turn. So water leaving one is reintroduced to the surface element rather than necessarily being the subsurface element. So. We've added an, a new control type in here. Um, so if I show you the outlet type, it's an under drain. Um, and when we add the under drain to a, a, a structure, and I'm just going to connect this down to, to the next one, what we actually get is we utilize the under drain details provided on the, on, on the soil form itself. So you can see here, I set up a soil section that includes a trench and includes an under drain capability as well. So I've got a single pipe in here. One of the other things that I'm going to do is have a quick look on the point inflow. And it's saying, do I want to connect to the surface element or do I want to connect to the under drain? Here I'm connecting to the under drain. So anything leaving through this under drain outlet is also coming into the downstream element. And, and the reason that that is important, I, I will show um, in a second uh, uh, as well. Um, there's one more thing that I need to, to add in here, which is to, to first of all start off by generating some area. So we're just going to draw out a, a little bit of area um, coming out here that's going to feed into my first swell. So there's an area, I'm going to connect that in as an inflow into the start of my first swell section. And one of the other things as well for, for, for users of MD so they'll be familiar with drawing flow paths. So if we want to see what's going on, then we can draw a flow path and have a look at our, our long section in here. So you'll notice here now, we're going to introduce an area directly into the swale element. We're then going to drain down into our trench based on the filtration rates. But then once we're in here, we need to pass downstream to the next trench and, and keep moving like that. So I'm just going to uh, set up a, a quick uh, analysis. So I've got some rainfall provided in here. Um, we'll apply that, I'll quickly validate, check all. And so this is another useful feature of MD Suds. We tell you if anything's missing. So I can see here, I'm missing trench porosity. Fantastic. Okay. Silly me. 30% in here. So we'll apply that and say, okay. We can revalidate it. Everything's ready to run. 
So we'll run through our, our storms now. And then we'll have a quick look and we'll see what's happening with the water. And we will see that that water is being introduced into the swell section only in the underdrain. Uh, so we'll fill the underdrain first before we start filling um, the, the top surface. So that's something which we've uh, worked hard to give you the best sort of real world representation of these flow paths um, that are going on. So again, if we have a quick look in here, so here you go, Pete, this one should show sort of quite nicely. We fill sort of the swell section. And then as we get into the underdrain, we start to, to fill up our trench element first. So you can see we've not quite filled the trench, but crucially, our swell element may be dry. So any extra area that's coming into the swell element would, would come in there. So that's that's an overview of, uh, of what's going on there um, in terms of our modeling capabilities. So we're cutting edge from where we can go in terms of exchanging our data, and we're also focusing heavily on such representation because as many people watching will be aware, um, there are some legislative changes on the way which are, are going to really push the use of, uh, of subs. So, um, Pete, without further ado, I'm going to... Thank you. Thank you. Uh, sorry, folks, I, I, I was really struggling to, to keep a pace with the questions. Uh, there are a lot of questions that we're yeah. going to answer after the, uh, the, the webinar because we've already reached our, our kind of one o'clock um, sort of cut-off type time. So um, I will produce a, an FAQ sheet and we'll send that out along with the hyperlink so you can you can watch the demonstration uh, again. Um, a lot of people are asking questions about the modeling side of things. Um, that it kind of feeds into maybe what, what we should do with the webinar in the future to show how we can do improved modeling, if you like, with market drainage incorporating those flow through structures to more accurately represent the positioning of headwalls and ponds yeah. and things like that. Yeah. So thanks, thanks a lot, folks. It's much appreciated. Um, so just just to recap, really, and summarize where we're at. So to me, this is one of those kind of step change moments um, in my 16 plus years with with um, using micro drainage and uh, being actively involved with micro drainage, and the the whole bin philosophy now is starting to come together. Um, particularly since we, we became innovised in October of last year. Um, we've historically, with micro drainage, literally just been involved with the design process at, at the start of this life cycle. But then what happens to that design? Where does it go to? Where does it end up? Who's going to operate and who's going to maintain these assets at the end of the day? That's all of the innovised technology that we've got that we can then bring together and this is what we're very much focused on, if that's what you require. So I would welcome your feedback um, on what you look forward to in terms of future enhancements and improvements on the software. We've got a really clear image of where we think we need to go, but I want that validated from you because it's most important that we, we're doing things to make your life quicker and easier and faster and more productive, not what we want to do. Um, what we can offer you right now is the opportunity to expand your capabilities because if you are literally just involved in the design side of things, what about the clients that are out there that need to look at the asset management? And I'm thinking of the uh, local authorities, the Environment Agency, Network Rail, Highways England, all that information needs to be brought into an asset management package and it needs to be um, Managed in terms of hazards and in terms of maintenance regimes, in terms of funding, etc. We've got the capability to manage that with the um, the internet asset management software, which is something we can share with you uh, and help you to provide more services to such clients. So we're looking at providing those complete solutions, and this is from the yellow zone, which is historically the, the micro drainage zone of design through construction into as built and then operations and maintenance and planning and analysis. So that whole cycle were completely covered. It is completely covered with the advanced software technology available to you today. And it's proven and industry standard, whether you're modeling, whether you're asset managing or whether you're designing. So in conclusion, as I say, this is a real step change of an upgrade to help you to comply with BIM and certainly with the SUDS side of things as well. Um, I hope you've been appreciated the enhancements that we've made with that integration with Civil 3D, which the vast majority of people would appear to be using, and that's been our feedback all the way along the journey. 
Um, the IFC export is the one that I feel will help you with your, your Revit models and maybe with Bentley. Um, but I've had some very good feedback on the Bentley side of things as well. So I'll come back to you with that and the separate cover, Max. Uh, much appreciated. And the, the Haven schedules, again, is just time saving and automatically open. There was a question coming in saying, can you specify what those Haven's output schedules contain? Is there a way of editing that? Just a quick question. Isn't that? So um, currently, no, no. We, we we've sort of gone with sort of a, a, a sort of catch all. So we will only export the sheets that we identify objects for. We've got our own sort of mapping built into the software. Um, if that's something that, that that you think, yeah, actually, I want to, I want some of that myself, and, and to expose that, then then that's certainly something that we can look at. And I would encourage everybody. Um, following this webinar, there is um, the uh, process to get the CPD certificates. Um, involves a short survey. If there's something which you've uh, you, you've seen or you, you really think we're, we're massively driven here by by uh, changing the software to meet your needs, so please let us know in in those comments if there's something which you think that's great. But if, if here's step two of what you need to be doing, or alternatively, if you think there's something that we um, that you think would really benefit you, let us know. Let us know. Um, Absolutely. And, and, and the more people ask for such things, it rises up the development Definitely. tree. So, and, and, and the, the future development comes from you, the marketplace. It doesn't come from a wish list of what we have here. It's just really what people want. So that's, that's to encourage you to input in the survey, which I'll cover in a second just now. So that whole BIM, whole life cycle asset management requirement is also available to you. It's going to make life quicker. Um, we're, we're transferring intelligent data, it's better quality data, uh, it'll save time, and it's going to help your clients to maintain those assets over their whole life. Uh, so we're here to provide you with those complete solutions. That was a fantastic demonstration. I'm really uh, delighted that this has been rolled out now, and I'm really excited to hear your feedback and look forward to keeping in touch. And carrying out further webinars in the near future. Yeah, that's it. Thank you ever so much for tuning into the webinar today. And we uh, look forward to uh, supporting you using Marketridge 2018. Thanks very much, folks.